What do you do when you think that you went away on vacation and suddenly arrive home to find somebody else has decided to claim your residence as their own? We're going to talk about that and more on today's episode. Let's get ready to scale. Hey guys, I am Jeanette Friedrich, Director of Investor Relations for, for Blue Lake Capital. And today I am being joined by George McCleary. Now I am super stoked to have George on the show because this is going to be a pretty unique episode in comparison to some of the other things we talk about, even though George has a very extensive background in real estate himself. So on that note, he's actually the principal of McCleary Realty and Development, which is a locally owned real estate brokerage and investment company that specializes in residential and multifamily properties in Portland, Oregon. He is also the CEO of Defender Network, a company that specializes in squatter defense and title fraud defense. George is actually known for his viral TikTok, quote, I stole a house, which details how squatters exploit the system for illicit financial gain. It got tens and millions of views across all platforms, and it led to him being invited on all kinds of renowned TV shows, uh, news channels, all kinds of interesting drama. So before we jump into today's conversation, I am going to treat you to that video. This is how I stole a house in Portland, Oregon and totally got away with it. So the first thing I did was find a vacant house that somebody was trying to rent. Next, I looked up how to break into a lockbox without using force. Thanks, YouTube. Next, I forged some documents. This made it look like I had a lease agreement and I called the utility companies and had the utilities put in my name. I'm not gonna pay them, but they don't know that. When the owner showed up, I politely explained that this was my house now and they need to leave. So they call the police and I show them my lease agreement and the utility bills and they tell the owner that this is a civil matter and they've got to sue me. This made the owner super angry, so she lawyers up and tries to evict me. Of course, I can't afford a lawyer, so I call up a tenant advocacy group who gives me a lawyer that's 100% free and funded by taxpayers. So my out-of-pocket is still zero dollars. So this lawyer fights on my behalf for months and months, really driving the owner crazy and costing her tens of thousands of dollars. Finally, the owner decided it would be cheaper to just give me a chunk of cash to leave rather than continue paying the lawyer. So she writes me a check for 10K and I move out. I didn't even have to clean the place up, and that's a good thing, because I do a lot of drugs, and the house looks every bit of it. Still no thank you note for aerating the walls, but whatever. So I just got nine months of free rent in a house that otherwise would have cost me three grand a month, plus a nice cash for keys check. And I wasn't even charged with anything. I always thought that stealing was wrong, but it turns out if you steal a house, it's not even against the law here. So this couldn't have worked out any better. Thanks, Portland. All right. Fantastic video. It's been a minute since I've watched that one, like in its entirety, even though it made me famous for a minute. It's <laughs> It's been a long time since I've actually watched it all the way through. Well, George, officially, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. So happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was hilarious because I started reading through some of the comments on Twitter and apparently some people literally thought that you were serious in sharing this story, which was hysterical because obviously it was meant to be a satirical piece of film, you know, that or content that you created. But I'm curious to know, you know, what drove you to suddenly decide you're going to be the dude that makes these kind of videos on TikTok? Man, I never planned it that way, but it is the way that things worked out. So what happened was, so I live in Portland and you live in a West Coast city. So you understand that there's been some policies over the past several years that have um, sort of led to, let's just call it um, kind of unrest in a lot of ways. And so crime has kind of proliferated. And I am politically just right down the middle. I really don't identify as either right or left, but I've really gotten fed up with a lot of policies here in Portland because they've directly affected my livelihood as a real estate investor. So I woke up one day, it was actually Super Bowl Sunday, and I said, you know what? I'm going to make a video about how I've heard that squatters are operating and getting away with this crime just with impunity. So I did a tongue in cheek video that you guys just saw, just pretending to be the guy who steals the house. And I uploaded it to TikTok. It got taken down like within like 
a half an hour. I posted it. I was watching the Super Bowl. I opened TikTok back up and the whole thing just exploded. I've never had like every single notification go off before, but um, it was one of those things like you swipe down, it just repopulates with like millions of views. And so you're like, I was like, holy smokes. But then er, it's gone. It gets deleted. And I'm like, okay, well, easy come, easy go. Let's just see how it does on other platforms. But before I had done that, people had downloaded it and posted it to Twitter as like their own content. So that's when things just kind of started exploding. And it was like the very next day that like news channels were calling and like anybody that I've ever met was like texting me and emailing me being like, dude, holy crap. Like I see, I saw this video. My grandma sent it to me and <laughs> things just kind of went from there. Wow. <laughs> that's so funny because, you know, you've accomplished the thing that so many content creators work for their entire life and you did it by accident, which is hilarious, but also the very literal meaning of viral. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's great that you did it and that you're drawing attention to it because it actually is no joke. I mean, it costs investors a ton of money and it makes no sense. It's crazy. I mean, it's just nuts that somehow people have found these loopholes and they exploit them to the craziest of extents. So, you know, you have called this essentially a squatter epidemic, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, just to kind of further expand upon that, what do you mean by a squatter epidemic? And more importantly, where is it the worst? Well, the game has changed, Jeanette. Basically, it used to be so any squatter that I have dealt with personally, luckily to this day, like knock on wood, I haven't had like a full blown like professional squatter invade any of my properties. I have had to kick out guys that have like fallen asleep um, inside like a house I'm flipping or like a development project. And I just, you know, move them along. They're usually just homeless addicts and, you know, they leave. But I'd heard about several instances with my colleagues getting full-blown squatters with their like putting utilities in their name, like faking leases. And I'm like, okay, this is terrible. So I make the video and what ended up happening was I started hearing from people all over the country. So people saying like, hey, we're going to hunt you down. Like the people that just didn't get it. But most people actually at least I like to think, did get it. And that resulted in a ton of people contacting me being like, yo, um, it's funny you make this video because like the exact thing happened to me or the same thing happened to a colleague of mine. And I would, and I would respond, I'd be like, what happened? And so I started responding to these people and then like having Zoom calls and then they would like forward me articles about them. And they're like, well, actually, here's how things ended up shaking out. And I ended up being like a lightning rod for all this information. And I couldn't believe just how like, you know, desperate, scared, and just kind of rudderless all these people were with, you know, how they were going to handle their squatter situations. There was just no like definitive resource for it. So I thought to myself like, okay, this is an underserved market. And like, now I'm kind of that guy. Um, what am I going to do with this? So I basically just like consolidated all this information and to, uh, and to answer your question about where it happens, it happens everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's not just in blue states like ours, like in Oregon and California. It's literally everywhere. But I was able to basically consolidate all of this information that I was getting from all these people, the conventional methods of removal, the unconventional methods of removal, which are highly entertaining, <laughs> some of them highly dangerous and really advisable. Like people have been unalived by their squatters. Like there's a really dark side to this is really bad, but I get into all of it and I basically condensed it into a course called squatter defender. And I made it actually, I'm just now releasing it. That is so cool. What I actually commend you for it. Um, you know, obviously you have an entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, so do we at Blue Lake. And when you, I mean, that's the very essence of how to actually find and create a really strong business is identify a huge gap in the market, a huge need in the market and find a solution, you know, to address that. So, you know, I think it's great that you've actually put that together. And I'm curious to know, you know, what can we learn Obviously, you don't want to give away everything so people can go and get the resource themselves. But what would you say are some high level critical takeaways that you have discovered through this data journey that you had to really take? So the biggest takeaway is that the traditional method of like, oh, I've got a squatter. Let me call my lawyer, see what he thinks. That method is a really great way to spend a whole lot of time getting rid of your squatter and spending a whole lot of money. And in some cases, like 
that's your best avenue. Like in the, I stole a house video, you know, that's what the lady does. So of course I made all of that up. I didn't actually squat, but <laughs> you know, the process of like hiring a lawyer and then eventually paying the guy out with cash for keys. So I actually, I talk about cash for keys in the squatter defender course. And, you know, I'll tell you in there, what I'll tell you now is that it's a hard pill to swallow to pay off a squatter. That's somebody that's committing a crime, but that is one tool in the belt that you have mm -hmm. and you can't neglect any single one of them the court system there's um there i talk about the unconventional methods and those are that's where things get good it's about a third of the course is just the unconventional methods and in addition to being just highly entertaining they're they're, they're all methods that like i can't like look you in the eye or sign something and recommend per se but i can say like i heard somebody did this and it worked <laughs> so mm -hmm. And here's and here's what they did. So um, and some of them are just downright hilarious, like uh, releasing snakes or like animals into the house, <laughs> like to to get them to go away. Um, so there's a there's a bunch of different methods, but I really highly recommend that if you have a squatter, you know, you contact somebody like me and you figure out kind of what your best course of action is because. I've talked with enough people at this point who have done just that. They've reached out for a consultation and they're like, yeah, um, I had this tenant, he stopped paying and like, he's been in there for like, like almost a year. He hasn't given me any money. And like, he gives me like a hundred bucks every so often. So I got to get rid of this squatter. What should I do? I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, but you do not have a squatter. You have a tenant that is not paying you anymore. So he actually has the contractual right to be there. You have the right to like, go try and kick him out. But any of like what I'm talking about in squatter defender, apart from like stuff that pertains to landlord tenant law. Yeah. You've got yourself a tenant and you gave him permission to be there. So it's not really a squatter. Yeah. And that's a very good distinction. And I'm glad you're bringing that up. Um, you know, I, I think we've all heard the horror stories, rather it's through person, you know, people we know, or <clears throat> excuse me, or through social media, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there is a difference between the two of them. And so, you know, what you're really talking about is a true, true squatter. So how would you define that as a complete, you know, kind of like your video or, you know, a, someone homeless that just, you know, kind of starts to never leave. What is quote the definition of a squatter? It's somebody who enters and occupies a property, basically like making some sort of claim to it, who never had any claim, a legitimate claim to it in the first place. So if it's a non-paying tenant, yeah, you had a contract, you had an agreement and you broached, you, you breached that agreement and you know, you got to handle that. But with a squatter, there's never any agreement. There's never anything between the landlord and the tenant or a property manager. It's just a guy entering a property and making a claim like, you know, this is mine now. Yeah, which is crazy. So let's talk about that because I mean, essentially what we're talking about is, you know, I wouldn't call it title or deed fraud, but I mean, that's when someone is at least creating a fake uh, lease of some sort, but then there's, mm -hmm. there's even those next levels. So can you kind of take us through what those potential levels are starting at, you know, a, a fraudulent lease all the way over to, you know, potentially having fraudulent titles or deeds? Yeah. So that's actually how I learned about deed fraud because I heard about people forging leases and I was like, okay, well, that's easy to do. And I heard stories about squatters forging leases that were like written on like, you know, notebook paper or something. It's just a total joke, but because it's like a written document and they're basically able to like create a situation with the police where the cops are like, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, this lease obviously looks bogus or whatever, but it's, it's, it's technically a contract and I have no proof that it isn't valid. So sorry, like I can't kick this guy out. And so the reality is that possession is nine tenths of the law. The shirt on your back is presumed to be your own unless somebody proves otherwise. And so you get to keep the shirt on your back or the house that you're in, unless someone can prove that you're not supposed to be there. And so all the stories that I heard about this, um, I, they were ranging from just, you know, homeless trespassers all the way up through uh, up through deed fraud. And that's where things started getting just really, really insidious because forging, forging a, a lease that actually looks legitimate, you know, you've got somebody who's basically just, you know, printing something out and just filling stuff in, like no big deal. But then I heard about people occupying places and saying like they don't have a lease but they actually have the deed to the property. Like, hey, this is my house, I own it. And like, you can actually like look it up. And sure enough, you look it up there and there's the guy, he's on, he's How does on that the deed. Happen? 
Ready to Scale is brought to you by Blue Lake Capital, where we hunt down the best multifamily investment opportunities that we can find and invite investors to join in with us. We target Class B value-add multifamily properties across the Sun Belt. Our CEO, Ellie Perlman, invests a substantial amount of capital into every deal. This means our interests are aligned with yours. If you're an accredited investor looking to expand your portfolio and diversify sponsors, be sure to visit us at bluelake-capital.com. Blue Lake Capital. Be bold, be extraordinary, and keep moving forward. So you and I both know, we both bought a bunch of real estate. In addition to all those loan documents that you signed, one of those documents is the deed. And that's one of those documents that the notary stamps. And that little stamp from that notary, that's the security measure for a deed that gets recorded with the county and gets an iron, like an ironclad on the chain of title. So what do you do? You you just have a grantor, a grantee, a fake notary stamp, and you forge it. And you can move into the house under your own name. But it seems like, you know, those aren't going to last as long because and not actually give you actual title forever because the owner is going to the, they know exactly where you are and who you are. And so those are kind of the dumber criminals. <laughs> but unfortunately, uh, I heard about some cases where you've got some smarter criminals and they're not, they're not splitting the atom here. They're essentially forging the deed in the name of an identity that they've stolen. So they've got the social, they've got a bank account, they got maybe even a, like a fake ID that has their picture on it, but it's an identity that they've stolen. They put the, 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 the uh, property into that, they title the property into the name of that identity that they've stolen. Then they call up a wholesaler and say, Hey, just bought this place. I'll sell it to you for 5k over. And the wholesaler like opens up escrow and they pull title. And if there's any debt on the property, it's, you know, it's for the last owner. You'd be like, oh yeah, I just assumed it subject to people do that all the time. And all the sales proceeds get wired to that stolen bank account and it's gone. Title insurance, the regular Alta owner's policy that you see like on all the HUDs of all the properties that you bought doesn't cover it so you are full-blown just sol and then you got to do an action to quiet title it's a whole thing it's a it's a nightmare wow it definitely sounds like an absolute nightmare and it really is absolutely mind-blowing mm -hmm. so you know more importantly i mean it's, it's all juicy and interesting but let's talk about what people can do to actually protect themselves so you know particularly yeah. when we're talking about title or deed fraud are there steps that we can take either as multifamily owner and operators or even for you know our, our listeners that own just single family real estate or whatever it may be uh, to avoid having something like that happen. So the only way to know if title is transferred on your property is to just pull up your county registrar and where your title is. And with your morning coffee every morning is just push refresh every morning. Make sure that title is still in your name. So obviously you're not going to do that. And nobody does. Nobody checks on their titles. But I made a company with that has software that does that for you. And if anything is awry, it lets you know right away. And the reason that's important is you can't you can't prevent somebody from forging a deed and file, filing it with the county. Like the only way that you can prevent that is with a full like overhaul of like the deed recording process in basically every single county in the United States. And that's not going to happen anytime soon. I hope it does. But what you can do is prevent your equity from being stolen. And the way you prevent that is you find out it out about it quick enough to where you can file an affidavit with the county, a notice of false filing. You can call up your title company, you can file an insurance claim. You can make it so that the title cannot pass again because that's where your equity gets stolen. So what Title Fraud Defender does, that's the company that I formed that has a software that tracks your title. So it costs like a few bucks a month. And if anything goes wrong, if anything, uh, if your if your title changes. We just, we alert you and, oh, you know what? I sold that property, you know, no, no big deal. It's like, okay, cool. Put another one of your properties in there and doesn't charge you anything, but okay. I don't recognize this. My title is transferred to, to who I've never heard of this person. Then like, okay, you got to sound the alarm and we tell you what to do if that actually happens. And if you follow those steps, then you're not going to get your equity stolen. Wow. Yeah. 
Very impressive. Very impressive. Um, you know, it's, it is again, I, I, I still have a hard time, like literally finding the words to wrap. It's hard to believe. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, it's okay to say that. And like, and yeah, people have just, been like, it's, it's that's, mind blowing. that's not possible church. Like there's title company, there's, there's police, there's like, yeah. this, this never happens. And I'm like, dude, I thought the same thing. But then when you get on somebody on a zoom call, who's like crying because they lost like a half million dollars of their equity. And that's all the money they had in the world. Uh, yeah, no. And then I actually spoke with a, of like a couple of like the deed fraud lawyers, like the preeminent guy. Um, one of them is actually down in LA. He, you know, would go through all these different cases and scenarios and he's like, yeah, no, I mean, I, I do what I can. And I, you know, I'm, I, it's, it's just an uphill battle because fraud cases, they're really difficult to investigate. You, If you do actually catch these people, you know, getting the money back is really tough. It's like kind of like it's been transferred to a Nigerian prince or something. Mm -hmm. You know, it's those cases where you just there's no deep pocket. There's no like insurance that'll pay out on that. You're just you're just you're, you're just out of luck. Wow. Wow. So aside of utilizing your software, which can, you know, definitely be a way to vigilantly monitor, you know, all of these important records, is there any other pragmatic steps that people can take to try to prevent their properties from being impacted by squatters? If there was, I promise I would tell you. Um, <laughs> it's not just a, this isn't a, just a big commercial for title fraud defender. It's really like, I really want to just spread awareness of this because it's one of those things where like this year, there is about 10,000 cases previous year, there was like 5,000. The year before that, there was like 2,000. So it's growing in popularity. And when you can commit a crime and make a bunch of money from it and not get busted for it or have extremely low likelihood of getting busted for it, then there's a really good chance that that type of crime is going to proliferate. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to scam somebody who knows what the scam is. And if you've heard of deed fraud, even if you don't subscribe to Title Fraud Defender, and you're, you know, you're at least at least you know what it is, so that when it when and if it does happen, you'll you'll know like, oh, okay, so, all right. And and there was a guy talking about that on a podcast. Well, I'll ask him what he thinks, and okay. you can find me on social, and you know, I I'll tell you what to do. Well, wonderful. All right. Uh, well, George, very insightful and very interesting. Um, now, I do want to kind of segue over to what we call the lightning round questions, which are five questions that I ask all of our guests. Uh, yeah. So for just to kind of get started. So when you're not, you know, apparently making TikTok videos that accidentally go viral, that then give you a fantastic idea for a great business solution that, you know, uh, real estate investors need all across the entire country. What do you mm -hmm. do for fun? I am an avid outdoorsman and uh, exercise fanatic. I've, I was a collegiate runner, collegiate athlete, and I enjoy skiing and really just like taking advantage of the opportunities that the Northwest has to offer. Uh, Portland's gotten some bad press in recent years, and some of it very much deserved, some of it not, but it's still a really wonderful place to live if you enjoy getting out of the house and enjoying what nature has to offer. So yeah, and I think anybody, if you work in real estate, you need some sort of like outdoor meditation time to sort of cope with the stress of the career. I feel like you, mm -hmm. you could identify with that, right, Jeanette? So, oh, I can. <laughs> so yeah, getting out and moving your body. Excellent, excellent. Okay, now what is something interesting about you that most people don't know? Boy, something interesting I mean, people don't know. Um, I really kick ass at the yo-yo. Um, <laughs> I have random skills and my wife and I have been mar married for 10 years and we have came across a yo-yo one time and I started doing a bunch of tricks with it and she says hang on a second you're really good at the yo-yo I'm like yeah I got good at it when I was like 12 and apparently it never went away so <laughs> <laughs> random little skills like that very cool very cool all right now classic question that you're probably asked on a lot of podcasts but I think it's still a good one what is a book that you recommend people really need to read Okay, this is going to be like a little bit of a hot take and probably a little off topic since, you know, we're talking about real estate, but a book that I really enjoyed recently is called The Way of the Superior Man and it's about it's 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 made for men, but I feel like anybody could read it. And it's, it's about basically embracing your masculine purpose, not like being macho or being a jerk. It's about like gaining purpose from your masculinity and being the best you can be as a man. And there's 
I feel like a lot in our culture today is that sort of like emasculates men or wants men to act, you know, not uh, not like themselves. And reading this book just really affirmed a lot of things that I was thinking. And it's given me a lot of purpose in my day to day as far as like my role as like a father, a provider and and uh, the head of a company. So check it out. And, you know, who knows? You might like it. Oh, I think it sounds wonderful, actually. Uh, I think it sounds great. Uh, I'll refrain from from sharing my opinion more about, you know, some dudes that I've met along the way before I got married. Thank God I found my husband. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of guys that I think probably need to read that book. I think a lot of them would benefit, especially those guys who may not have treated you well prior to you meeting your dream boat. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, one of the other things that we talk about that I think you'll appreciate on the show is, yes, you know, we love real estate. We like making money. Yeah, we want to have good returns. But it's really not about that. It's about, you know, positioning ourselves and our families to be able to build and live extraordinary lives. And so, you know, with that being the aim and that being the priority, what advice would you give to someone that is trying to accomplish that? I think there's a lot of people out there who haven't really taken the first step in building wealth. There's getting a good job, there's getting a good cash flow, but Wealth building comes as a result of basically building a portfolio. And there's a lot of people that are kind of on the sidelines because they're just they're just they're nervous and they don't want to give up certain things. They they want to live in a certain part of town or they don't want to live with roommates or, you know, they've got preferences that things that are going to make them uncomfortable. You need to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you want to build wealth. And it's not just like you said, Jeanette, it's not just about the money. It's about building something. It's about building something out of your life. And your legacy is not is not just wealth, but if you've been working at something in the same career for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, what are you going to have to show for it at the end of it? Is it going to be a pile of money? Is it going to be knowledge? You know, think about that a little bit and get comfortable being uncomfortable, taking those roommates, live in a bad part of town and you know, I, that's what I did when I first started off and I had crazy roommates who were snorting cocaine off of the <laughs> coffee table and <laughs> keep me awake at night when I had to be at work early the next morning. I'm like, what in the heck am I doing here? Like, but that duplex ended up being a really great investment. And I felt pretty smart as a 23 year old kid when it made a bunch of money. So, you know, get uncomfortable. Yeah. Excellent advice. Excellent advice. All right. Now, last but not least, George, if folks do want to get in touch with you, if they want to be able to gain access to these resources that you have created and curated through the most interesting and probably, I would say, accurate and authentic way possible, how can they do that? So the first product, Squatter Defender, is an online course devoted to squatter prevention, detection, and ejection. What to do about keep squatters away from your property and what to do if you have a squatter. It's $199 and it's at squatterdefender.com. But for your listeners, Jeanette, we actually have a discount code of 20%. Uh, just type in promo code Blue Lake, all, all one word, all together. Type in Blue Lake and look at, that'll get you 20% off. And we're also offering 20% off on Title Fraud Defender. That is the software that will monitor your title. And if anybody tries to muck with it, we let you know about it and you don't get your equity stolen. So head to titlefrauddefender.com or squatterdefender.com and we'd be happy to see you there. And if you Google George McCleary, you can find me very easily on social. I'm, <laughs> I'm all over the place. LinkedIn, friend me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we appreciate that very much, George. Thank you so much for taking time to come on the show. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks so much, Jeanette. And for those of you that invested your time with us today, thank you. Don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe to the show. Leave us some comments. Let us know if you have some more follow-up questions you want us to direct to George. And we will see you on the next episode.